All right, week two is upon us. We've got a division C set here between the one and two seeds coming into the tournament. Uh, strong side and Tuscan Raiders. Both these teams winning in week one. Uh, I think strong side, if I recall, swept their opponents last week, 2 0. Tuscan Raiders with a uh, two to one win. Good luck. Have G. All right, game one, Arabia. For uh, strong side, we have red and yellow. Midu playing as the Persians in red. Hot cross buns playing as Ethiopians in the yellow. On the other side, for the Tuscan Raiders, Isathor, blue, Britons. Ganji, not that Ganji, in the green, playing as the Franks. So I believe we've got... a. Uh, Two folks from the UK here in the Tuscan Raiders, and I think strong side is maybe a Belgian player and uh, a UK player. So lots of Northern Europe here today. All right, game one on Arabia. I can't recall off the top of my head what the other two maps were that were drafted for this set, but we'll, we'll find out soon enough. Take a look at the maps here for our players. Uh, Britons. Brutal gold out front under a hill. Not awesome if you're the archer player. Berries are great, though. Over here for our scouts player. Berries are pretty exposed. Also something I don't like, but that's a really nice gold. We could probably wall here toward the berries. Wall to the edge. Wall to the edge. I don't know, maybe even try to wall that wood line. Looking over at our Ethiopians player. Hot cross buns here. Oh, who's Bill? Yeah, close. Uh, looking at back gold. Yeah, that's pretty... Pretty sweet base for an archer player. Pretty wallable. Right? Wall here. Maybe even just wall here to the TC. Wall to that wood line. We have a real tight base. One way to go. And then our Persians player, Midu, here in the red. Yeah, those berries aren't awesome if you're the scout player. Back's pretty open too. That's a tricky map to wall. How do you wall this here? Sure, you could maybe try to work on a really long wall. It's pretty greedy. But if you have the initiative in Feudal Age, maybe you think about going that way. Otherwise, maybe think about going for some kind of potato, potato walls, egg walls. All right, so let's look at the ELOs here. Uh, these two teams coming in with a pretty similar entry rating. Roughly 1357 for strong side, 1373 for Tuscan Raiders. So that again is the average 1v1 ELO, more or less, of the two players, taking account both of their current ELO and their Mandatum. peak ELO. So yeah, most of these players, I'm not sure the split, but we'll assume most of these players are around mid 1300s, 1v1 ELO. Yeah, I'll be curious to see how fast the uptimes are at this level. My guess is that they'll be approximately what they are at the sort of 1700 plus level where the norm is you know, 18 19 pop i assume that those faster builds have trickled down by this point look at this uh, yellow ethiopians dropping a barracks before a mill is this going to be a rush All right, we've got the uptime coming could be men at arms it, we've got three vills so clearly hot cross buns wants to get this barracks up quickly i'm guessing this will be men at arms and men at arms up against uh, the scout player can be a problem. Take the Franks player off the berries. It could really hurt his early scout production. Uh, also, if he's forced to, to quick wall, it's going to be some idle time on the wood, maybe a delayed stable. But yeah, we've got pretty fast uptimes here. 20 pop for our Franks player, 19 pop for Britons, 20 pop for the Persians, and 19 pop here for Ethiopians. Nothing in the barracks, though. So yeah, I guess he was just rushing it up because he needed that second building. Well, if you're going straight archers, why not make that second building a mining camp? You're starting the gold income a little earlier. Maybe it doesn't matter. We will see here. Yellow already starting off with some small walls. Yeah, I really, really like this place. I think this is probably the nicest setup. Red trying to get a Vill Snipe does have the hill, but doesn't have the uh, feudal scout buff 
yet, Ready. so that build will be just fine. Loomed up as she is. This is Eric's a little awkward on the gold here. I don't like it being right up against the gold. Uh, later in the game, that's going to make for some efficiency problems if you want to try to get on the backside. Also, potential for archers to be able to range the gold from right outside the, the barracks there. Probably just bump it a few tiles away from the gold. But there it is. First barracks coming down. Green Scout trying to be a pest here, but good luck and damage in a base this tight. First range coming down uh, about at the same time for both of our archer players. And we've got a stable from red, and I'm sure a stable from red. There it is. No double bit yet for anyone except green. And okay, red's double bit just came in. So yeah, here's how red's going to wallet. Wallet here, I assume this maybe comes to the TC. This maybe comes to the TC. And then he'll just go outside the walls to get gold. Probably what we'll see. But maybe we'll be a bit more greedy than that. Are we looking on idle time right now? Wow, very, very clean builds. Not much idle time to speak of at all. Second range is down for yellow. The archer production at. No archers produced yet. There's the first ones queued up now. Getting two spears out, recognizing that um, he's up against scouts on this side. We've got one archer at the moment for blue. Hopefully blue notices this. Hasn't scouted it. Oh, that could be a problem. I really hope I really hope blue notices that. Especially since he's up against the scout player. And yeah, there are three scouts right there. Hopefully it doesn't have a false sense of security because of this woodline, but they are heading right for the gap. Spear coming over this way, though. Uh, so maybe Blue actually aware of the possibility. Real heads up play there by Isathor. Yay. Yeah, this villain, in fact, coming over to try to get this walled. Can he get the spear there in time? Run, little girl. Mandato. Going for the quick wall. Doesn't get it. Build down. All right, here come green scouts and reinforcements. Maybe be able to pinch red here. Nope, red looks like he'll get out just fine. Four scouts at the moment for red. Six for green. And what about archer pressure? Okay, archers are coming across right now for yellow. No fletching yet. Blue's archers already pressing over here. One scout down for each, pressuring the berries. So red will be off the berries here. Doesn't lose a build, though. Good for him. Oh, hole in the bushes. All right, fortunately, though, yellow already to the rescue. Fletching on the way. Maybe an archer lost here for red. Nice micro by blue. Ah, loses the vill. Don't lose the farm. Don't lose the farm. Ah, oh, loses the farm. Nice snipe by blue. No upgrades on these scouts. Blue making nice use of the hill. This is a really good engagement so far by blue. Took out 75 wood on the farm. Oh, no, he's going to get another one. Red, please don't seed this. There we go. Red deletes it. Heads up. Play by red. Yellow archers chasing down blue. Shouldn't be a problem there anymore. The question is reinforcement. So blue trickling here. This could be a chance for red to jump on these. See if they notice. Green scouts coming in to help with the assist. Basically even military numbers at this time. But right now a 6 vil lead already for the Tuscan Raider. Strong side with a good bit of idle time all of a sudden. About a minute each. No upgrades on these scouts. Pathing is a bit of a problem at the moment. Blue archers in the mix, though. I think this is still going to be a good fight for Tuscan Raiders. The spears are in here now. And actually, no. It's turning out to be a pretty good fight for a strong side. Yeah, look at the military numbers all of a sudden. 15 to 8. Yeah, I mean, maybe if green waits just a little longer there to engage, waits until those blue archers are present. Scouts without upgrades just suck against feudal archers. And blue, where can I get these walls finished? Let's see if you can get them up before the counterattack comes in. I don't know if you will. Only one villager here. May need a tower here. And this is where I think walling this close to the gold could really come back to bite him in the butt. Because now these archers are going to be able to idle the gold. And of course, you idle the gold, that means you have idled the archer production. Tuscan Raiders maintaining that vill lead, but now they're behind a military count and... 
think military count at this point of the game more important than our archer count. Nice engagement there by blue archers. Manages to not lose a vill, but here come the yellow archers. Twelve yellow archers on the field, only five blue. Ready. This is not looking good right now for blue. Archers are in. They're going to get them off the gold. Never mind idling them from outside. They're going to go right inside. Really nice micro there by yellow. Hot cross buns. Playing a great game. Defensive tower, but it's going to be too late. I think blue probably needed this a minute ago. And there's going to be some vill losses. This vill number going to catch up real quick here. One vill down. Two vills down. Three vills down. Oh, is he even going to get the tower up? Four down. Oh, I can't watch. Oh, this is painful. Yeah, I think blue probably would have been better off there just, just bailing on that. Armor almost in here for green. Get the clean here, no problem, but only a four vill lead now for Tuscan Raiders. Strong side still with a significant military advantage. Line getting in on the action. And Isathor is going to try to finish these walls here. Where is the rest of Ow. Yellow's military coming in for another attack? Now, if these scouts can catch these archers out in the open, it should be an easy clean now that they have armor. They are Frank scouts as well, so they've got slightly more HP. Blue will be fully walled. But now, these armies heading over to green. Green's got a big base here, so lots of spots they can maybe try to get on the wall. Could run in here. Scouts, of course, could still run in. Around the edge. Let's see where they go for. Green has clicked the castle age. Isathor floating a lot of food at the moment, but of course, being off gold, means he hasn't been able to click up yet. Would have been able to click up otherwise. And here we go. Strong side. 12 military unit advantage. They're going to get in here. That house goes down. I'm going to try to get a market. Probably going to need to move that vill a little further back. Green waiting for the right moment to jump. There is a spear in the, two spears in the mix. Well, these spears, I think, are actually crucial for hot cross buns here. Those green scouts could be a problem otherwise. They, they have more than enough to, to deal with green. Blue's archers are going to have to come over here. Blue being harassed by Hot Cross Buns as Scout. Hot Cross Buns playing an awesome game here so far. So this mil uh, Vill count basically even, of course, that's because both of our um, Tuscan Raiders have clicked up at this point. And you know, the one problem those I don't know how much they can able to do. Only four archers in the field. So you get to Castle Age, but you're not going to have enough archers to convert an Expo. Oh, no! Oh, green! Ganji here had good defense. Yeah, gonna rush down a tower. That tower should go up in time. Knights will be coming out, and maybe this could actually work out for the best. Perhaps can trap these archers. Yeah, I actually think, yep, yeah, love it. Green can trap these archers, get the clean. This could actually work to their advantage, although this is still open here. Yellow would have to dive the tower, though, to get through it. And here come the knights. Plus one armor on these. Maybe wait for four and then try to dive. Second town center going down here for green. And what about blue? What's blue going to do when he needs? Oh. Did invest in the tower. So he's going to have to buy the stone just like green did here. Yellow does have some archers back at home that he'll be able to turn into expo. And it's really close right now. Tuscan Raiders did a really nice job of avoiding critical damage. Blue took some damage, but... They hear Ganji unfortunately attacking with only one knight at a time. Like I said, I think probably needs to wait for at least four. Try to jump on it at the same time. Right, losing more knights than he probably needs to there. We'll get the clean. Basically gave away two knights for free. Over on the other end, nice engagement here by Isathor. Pushing, uh, pushing, pressuring. We do here. Plus two armor on the way here for Midu, and then he'll be able to 
jump on this. How many knights does he have? Three. Plus the scouts. Yeah, should be able to jump on this with plus two armor, especially if you can get a hill. Third TC coming down here for Ganji. Tusken Raiders looking like they're in a pretty good spot here. I like their position. I think... Let's get Ganji. I think these knights should be getting over here immediately. They have a chance to pressure red. I think they, that time window might have closed. I think if Ganji had come here immediately after cleaning the archers, they could have had a good engagement here. And moreover, these archers wouldn't be clean, but now they're going to be cleaned, and all of a sudden, yellow will have archers, and blue will not. Nice micro here, though, by Isthor, trying to make the most of the engagement. Trying to keep the hill, trying to keep the distance. These knights had been here just a little sooner. These archer numbers are, are all intact. All right, red wheel bail. Still 11 archers. That's maybe only half of what they started with. And now, yellow and red will have the military advantage. Once again, 37 to 22. Blue remaining on one TC. Going to go for that fast ballistics. But uh, Tuscan Raiders are going to have to be really careful here. They are outnumbered. Plus, the Ethiopians have the uh, attack rate bonus. If blue can micro well, blue has a range bonus, but... Gotta keep the distance. No ballistics yet for yellow. No ballistics yet for blue. Green has a nice boom here going 65 bills. Second closest is red with 51. They are keeping that villager advantage, but just as in Feudal Age, strong side maintaining the military advantage. That's the thing with military advantage is it can snowball really, really, really quickly. One bad engagement here. Ganji and Isithor are going to have to be extremely careful. Yeah, strong side, I think, doing exactly the right thing here. Pressing the action. Forcing a fight. And Tusken Raiders are going to take this. I do not think this will end well for them. It's the Thor. Nice micro there. Keeping those archers moving back. Who's still with archer numbers? Yeah, look at the overall HP. 1,400 to 500. Yeah, this should be... This is going to be a problem for Tuscan This is going to be a serious problem. That 15 villager advantage at this point, who cares? Yeah, yellow's going to be able to range this gold. Only one TC right now for blue. They're going to break in here, I think. And blue could be out of this game. Actually, they let a lot of blue's archers survive here. Ballistics is in for blue. On the way for yellow. Siege Workshop coming down from blue. There are seven red knights still in the field. So that Mangano probably will not be long for this world. Blue's archer split on both sides of this fence. Doesn't want to delete the CC, doesn't, uh, pardon me, doesn't want to delete the palisade. Give those knights a free run into the base. But yeah, here comes ballistics for yellow. These archers are going to be really scary now. Oh, blue, don't lose the mass. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful green knights coming in. Tuscan Raiders still in this. Ah, green Knights don't have a... They don't have the numbers, though, to try to take a fight here. I don't think this is a good engagement for Tuscan Raiders. Yeah, those Ethiopian Expo absolutely mowing down the Tuscan Raider army here. Hot Cross Buns has really dominated this game so far. Third TC coming down now for red, yellow with two TCs and three ranges. I think still only two ranges for blue. Yeah, and Tuscan Raiders are gonna need to find some way to get military numbers here. Green will be vulnerable. Siege Workshop coming forward from yellow. Green has night numbers here, but doesn't want to get close to those archers. Another good fight for Green. He is catching these Red Knights out on their own. 
I try to dive on that? I think that's the right call. Hold off on diving there. Here comes Blue's army. Only 12 archers there. We've got 21 archers for yellow. If they can push this fight, they might be able to clean this. Green Knights really need to get in behind of yellow, though. Get that high ground. Force them to micro towards the blue archers as opposed to away. Mangan for blue! <gasps> oh, so close. Oh, that's a really great shot there for blue. And all of a sudden, look at the military numbers here. 47, 44. The bill number is almost identical. But here's what I think it's going to come down to. Yellow. Going from pure age. Fast in here. He's got these archer numbers. 25 of them. Needs to keep these alive. If yellow loses these. Oh, that's the thing, though. Even with this fast imp, you're not really sacrificing too much eco compared to your opponents. Eco numbers are roughly equal. Green at 86. Red at 85. Our cap players. Very comparable economies at the moment. Yellow wisely playing very conservatively with these archers. And get to Arbalist, especially being on the cap side here. Those Arbalists can just go through and obliterate green. I do favor strong side this position very much. We'll see. Tuscan Raiders can... Get the numbers to force an engagement before those upgrades come in. I don't think so. This, I do like this play here by Tuscan Raiders. They are forcing Yellow to play defensively here. Oh, actually, that's a good Mangonel shot. That's a lot of HP off Yellow. What do you think about diving this? I don't think so. But they are buying some time here. Imperial Age on the way for Blue. Let's see if Blue can keep these numbers alive before Imperial Age. No. Blue took some free damage there. I don't think this fight you want to take here if you're the Tuscan Raiders. Just dance, buy time. Who absolutely needs to conserve these numbers. And now the strong side army heading over here to green. Another siege workshop. They're yeah, Pure Lage on the way. 101 vills for Ganji. Again though, Tuscan Raiders did really nice. They bought themselves another two minutes. Like keeping the uh, strong side army on the field and away from this base. But Ganji somehow I need to survive until he's got most likely Paladin. At the very least Cavalier and the Blue Arbalist. Yeah, it's all just about damage control here. Damage control damage control and buy in time. Strong side now with a 30 vil advantage. Green trying to get a castle done here. The knights are in. Green throwing away a lot of bills right now. Look at this. Drop from 101 down to 86. These archers aren't even in at this point. Blue is up. But no upgrades yet. Alright, here comes Bracer. Green is going to lose a lot of knights here though. It's not a fight you want to take if you're green. I think green is just desperate at this point. Lost a lot of knight numbers there. Now 40 knights for red versus 23 for green. Not a bad fight here, though. Green taking that fight under the castle. The archer's not getting in on the unit action. Attacking a house there. Yeah, look at the numbers now for strong side. 50 military advantage. 20... Pardon me, no, 50 vil advantage. 20 military advantage. Arbalist not in yet for blue. Bombard cannons on the field here for Ethiopian's player. Hot cross buns. Is 
really dominated this game so far. Yeah, I really like that castle from yellow. Up on that hill, we'll range that TC a lot of the farm eco. Tear the stone. You can shred this castle from that position. That is a awesome castle. Green has not been able to afford that Cavalier upgrade yet. It does have the final armor upgrade coming in. Ooh. Nice snipe there by Blue on the Bombard Cannon. So that's going to buy Green a little more time with his castles. Nice use of the hill here. Britons do have a range advantage. Let's see if they can make use of this hill. Are being pushed off of it, though. It's a hard fight to call. HP advantage still the strong side. Archer numbers are so close here. Let's see what's going to matter more. The hill or that fire rate bonus. Plus thumb ring for Ethiopians. Britons without thumb ring. Fight looks really even. Cavalier on the way for red. Cavalier 15 seconds out for green. Another castle coming down here for green. Really like that castle. That hill, you need the gold. I think green is having a gold issues right now. Huh? No, okay. Still has access to two different gold mines here. That castle was important. The blue still only with 73 bills. 53 Expo, or pardon me, 53 Arb. Get those archers into the fight, Blue. Blue right now fighting with only a portion of his army. Oh, yeah, I think if he hadn't made that mistake, actually, probably would be close to clearing these yellow archers by now. Red diving in. See how good of a meat shield green can offer here. But another spot where green is fighting without blue. Little miscommunication there for the Tuscan Raiders. And green just cannot get night numbers at this point. Has 11 versus 20 for red. He's gonna lose one of his stables here to a ram. Ooh, actually cleans the ram. Cleans the bombard. Tuscan Raiders are holding on here. Cannot get the military numbers out right now, and if Paladin comes in for strong side, that will probably be the game ender. Blue really limited military on the field here. That's 40 archers total. Guess the rest are at home. 30 arb for yellow. I think blue needs to get those reinforcements over here. Green diving in again. Needs to keep these units further back because they keep aggroing to record those arbalists. Another castle from yellow. That castle goes up. That is definitely going to change the dynamic here. Tuscan Raiders are going to have a real hard time taking a fight. Still no Paladin upgrade in for red. Those archers might be able to take a good fight here. They're not going to deny this castle, but... Who's going to get to Paladin first? I assume me do. He's sitting on a ton of food. If I were selling some for gold, get that upgrade. Yellow's starting to make a switch into Halb, or supplement into Halb. And I love what Yellow's doing here with all the forward production tokens. Really nice. This game looking Pretty over at this point. Blue getting caught out in the open. Take an okay fight there. But population, 350 to 270. 
see, Red's gonna go for Hussar before Paladin. And we'll also try to raid these guys to death. There is a lot of openings here, some good opportunities for Hussar raids. And Midu hurting for gold. Let's have Phil's on gold now, so it must have relocated. This castle's down now, and now it's a free run into Ganji's base. And Ganji's fill numbers are gonna start plummeting here. Oh, and these halb are just gonna put the cavalry into the meat grinder. Yeah, Ganji may have already resigned himself to his fate. Throws away all of his cavalier there. Again, fighting without the arbalist. I think the arbalist, arbalist over here could have cleaned those, but I think they already knew this game was over. The GG is called. Yeah, and that was indeed a good game. Game number one will go to strong side. Very well played by them. Shudder to think what uh, Yellow's KD was in this game. Yeah, basically 2-1 to one for our Archer player. Nice KD for Isithor as well. Cav units just put into the meat grinder here. 35 buildings raised for yellow. And yeah, uh, blue took that early damage and then committed to that one TC play. And I don't know. I mean, they were behind in military numbers. I think that was maybe a reaction to that. But... That definitely hurt them in the long run. Uh, this is where never was really able to get much of an economy up and running. And uh, yeah, even with the one TC play, was about four whole minutes behind yellow getting up to Imperial Age. All right, game number two. Uh, appears to be Valley. Is that right? Why do I? Have All right, Valley, not terribly different from Arabia, but uh, do tend to have, have luck, good fun. All right, do tend to have thicker wood lines, tends to be more wallable than Arabia. And the other significant difference is the, uh, the namesake Valley. It's kind of marshland that runs to the middle. There is the option to try to mill this for both the shorefish and the hunt. Um, so far in the games we've cast on this map, haven't seen a lot of that. Uh, it is a significant risk to come out to the middle, but we will see uh, if these players try to make a go of it. And of course, one option is to come out here early in the Dark Age and then sort of bail out at some point in early Feudal Age. Not sure if that's worth uh, the travel time, the commute time, but uh, I suppose that would be one option. Another option is... If you get the initiative, you're the one pushing the aggression. You could try to send Vils out, perhaps in Feudal Age, to take some hunt. Um, but a lot of teams just opting to play it safe, rely on the two boar and the sheep and the berries. Now, you don't have hunt near your TC. So if you want to push and hunt like you would normally on Arabia, you got to push it all the way from this riverbed, which, as you can see, is uh, a good distance here. All right, let's take a look at our civilizations. So, strong side, the winners of game one. Midu again in the cav role, this time playing as the Hindustanis. Hot cross buns, presumably in the archer role here, playing as the Khmer. And on the other side, Isathor as the Mongols. A Mongol pick suggests maybe Isathor is thinking of coming out here to take hunt. Uh, I think that's the main reason to try to take Mongols on this map. Another option would be uh, if you're thinking sheep block in there. If you are thinking about trying to take it late by walling up, maybe you're thinking Mangadai. But generally when you see Mongols on this map, I think it's because players are anticipating taking the hunt in the middle. Um oh actually, okay, yeah. It's the Thor. I think we'll be playing in the archer role because we've we've got Lithuanians here 
for Ganji in the green. So, yeah, we might have some really fast uptimes here all around with Mare. We don't need to build our two buildings. Well, he's not starting on Straggler Tree, so maybe not going for one of those ridiculously fast uptimes. Yeah, there it is. Coming forward with these bills. Okay, here's a question I don't know. With the Mongol hunt bonus, do Mongols collect food faster from hunt than they do from shorefish? I assume the answer is yes. I actually don't know. Alright, green attempting to push from the middle. Red Probably going to try to prevent this. Oh, what a pain. Ganji. Doesn't follow up for just a second and that thing goes back. That is a pain when you're luring from that distance. No one else opting for the middle at this point, except for blue, our Mongols player. Let's see just how fast our uptimes are. Yeah, so this is interesting. The Khmer player actually going for two different Dark Age buildings, despite not needing to. Presumably because you're not taking any hunt in here. And I don't think Yellow pushed anything. Here's a question. Has Yellow scouted out Blue's mill at this point? Let's take a look at his Fog War. You know, has not. Although I think Red will notice it here. I like, I like what Red is doing here, just scouting the river. If you do find your opponent in that riverbed, that is almost certainly your first place of attack. Actually, red misses it. Oh, that is unfortunate. 20 pop for green, 20 pop for blue, and 20 pop for yellow. And it looks like blue lost the scout. There. How? I did not hear an attack sound, but I might, might just not have been paying attention. Yeah, Blue lost his scout somewhere. I assume under the TC? I don't see a body. I've already faded into the ground. I, I have to assume that he lost it to the TC. So we don't have any HP off of that scout. No, oh, okay. No, this was a scout on scout fight. 6 HP left on yellow. Red still didn't notice it. So close. Scouted just about everything, but it definitely seems to me like strong side planning to aggress on blue here first. If red all the way over here. And blue will not have a scout to identify when the archers leave yellow's base. But Tuscan Raiders, they'll both be up first. Range coming down for blue. Red is going to try to snipe this vill. Blue needs to get another villain here. Nice delay there by red. There's a spear out, so the range will go up, but it is slightly delayed. Actually, a stable coming down from yellow. A stable coming down from red. I don't love the position, though. I gotta say, right up against the gold. Why not drop the stable out here? So we're gonna get double scouts. So let's see if uh, Tusk Commanders are able to identify this quickly enough and just get a bunch of spears on the field. Very greedy walls here for green, but I can see why. They've got these elongated wood lines. How far is he gonna take that? Is he gonna loop that all the way down here? against double scouts, actually. This is probably the worst kind of wall to do. Granted, Ganji, Ganji does not know that they are up against double scouts. Right, but scouts can be dealt with with real small walls. Wide walls are perhaps more, more useful against archers. Second range come down here for blue. Thor housed here. Well, it's a second mill. Only one spear on the field. And oh man, this is where I, you really wish that blue still had his scout so that he could have identified this. 
He identified this. Would be real easy to keep this alive, right? Just get a few spear on the field. Ganji coming over with scouts. Looks like they're ready to move out. No fletching yet for these blue archers. The blacksmith. Yeah, blacksmith coming down. Here are the yellow scouts. Oh no, Ganji separated from Isthor, and Isthor without fletching could get cleaned by these scouts. Oh, this is so unfortunate for Isthor. This is this is where just this is just a communication failure for green and blue. If these scouts are there, that never happens. But three archers for free, and the initiative now suddenly taken away from Tuscan Raiders. I mean, if the the scouts are with these archers, these archers are on top of Khmer. You know, a minute. Second stable coming down here for yellow. So they are going to go heavy feudal. Already 13 farms down for our Khmer player. The chance to punish that might be gone. This is a lot of scouts on the field. 12 of them. Fletching is now in, but the numbers are just too small. And at this point, they need to notice double scouts and just start spamming spears. They have three spears total. Yeah, and this is going to be a clean for strong side. They need to start queuing spears here. Yeah. Brutal. Brutal. And these guys are out in the open. All right, we do have another spear queued here for blue. I think green needs to start queuing spears as well. Especially since this wall isn't finished, but even just for the sake of getting them over to help support your teammate. Scouts could still get around on this side. Yeah, red. I think... Oh, it's going to be another clean. All right, two spears here should be enough to deal with this, at least without upgrades. Bloodlines, though, coming in for yellow. All right, they're going to try to press the action now that they have two spears. Let's see if they can get in on time. Bloodlines makes these scouts a lot scarier. And from 45 up to, what, 65 HP? Scouts in here on the mill. That's going to be one build down. Spear in the mix. I didn't see it. Yeah, what happened to Green's Wallingville? I don't know if he lost the Wallingville or just intentionally stopped walling. Going for the counterattack here. Your yellow, I think. Probably try to get that armor here, right? Or do you go for the attack upgrade because those spears are the main issue? Yellow thinking about taking this fight. A lot of meat shield, though, out in front of those archers. Just see just how good bloodlines are here. And that works out quite well there for Tuscan Raiders. They will be very happy with that engagement. See if they can pressure this golden wood. It's very exposed here. These two spears still alive. One of them on almost zero HP. Yellow, jump in those archers. Another spear goes down. I mean, pardon, another scout goes down. No more spears now, or at least out of position, so these archers should be cleaned. Prioritize the military. If you're blue here, making the spears, keep making the spears. Three spears for blue, uh, for green. I think they're all at home. Blue's got to get some more spears here. This is going to be cleaned. Is forcing a lot of production out of yellow, but even with that, look at this. The 400 food for yellow. Yellow has kept up a really, really nice food eco. Oh. Red, okay, red clicks. Floating a bit of food there. It's the Thor with the food to click up, but not the gold. Oh no, no spears in the mix. The scouts are not in position yet. They managed to keep most of those archers alive. Yeah, I don't know why it's not producing spears here. You get a mass of like four spears with this mix. You could just run rampant right through this eco. Good engagement there for Tuscan Raiders. Are they finally in a spot where they can get some damage in? Just continue to produce. Meanwhile, red has already clicked up. Yeah, 
and stupid Khmer jumping in the houses. We saw this on, uh, was it a Division A Valley game? Similar situation, feudal pressure was in on the Khmer base, and they do such a good job of just minimizing the damage, buying time with the uh, houses that can be garrisoned. Green still hasn't gotten any upgrades on the scouts. I mean, perhaps because the numbers have never gotten up that high, has produced a ton of scouts. But has only ever had you know, maybe four, five, six alive at a time. Reinforcements being cleaned here by yellow. Castle clicked for green and for blue, but here's the problem. Red is up. Red is Hindustani. Going three stable camel. And I think you go you go right for green here. Green is going to have absolutely nothing to deal with those camels. And now these archers will finally be clean. I don't even know if they pick one villager. Yellow will jump on that. With armor, with bloodlines, easy kill. Tuscan Raiders do have a villager advantage here. They are both up to castle age, but green has to survive these camels. And I don't know... He's going to be able to do that. Furiously walling down here is Ganji. The camel's going to get there first. Just drop a house, please. Please drop a house. Oh, no. Please. Finish the wall. That spear should alert him to the danger. Okay. Here we go. Hindustani camels, though, do have a building attack bonus, so... Ganji's got to be very careful to make sure he stays on top of the quick walling. The second batch of camels actually coming over toward Isthathor. Isthathor getting these vills out just in the nick of time. Oh no. It deletes a hole to let the vills in. And that's going to let the camels in. Bill's going down here for uh, for Isathor. Oh no. Alright, that was a nice call there, but that's going to go down quick. Needs to get a villain behind. Needs to wall this quickly. He's going to lose all the archers here. He is. Oh, that is so unfortunate for Isathor. That is probably the game there. I mean, seconds before Castle Age. Seconds before you can click the crossbow upgrade. His entire army caught out in the open. Going to be cleared here. Oh, that is just brutal to see. Ganji and Isathor thought it had been in a decent spot, especially since Yellow hadn't been able to click up. Expo on the field with no knights. Uh, Expo on the field with um, only Camel. Would have been a really good fight. I think the archer player could have gotten significant damage here on the Hindustani player. But that is but a dream at this point. Tuscan Raiders with very, very little military on the field. Zero archers. Up against 13 soon-to-be light calves. 17 camels. And Ganji is going to be repairing here all day long. Three TC now for Hindustani. Only two for Ganji. The Ville numbers are equal. But um, this is terrifying. This Thor needs the wall like a maniac at this point. Still no range units on the field. Do we have a transition for yellow? No. Three stable. They're just going cav all around. I think your Isthor here. Start dropping barracks, right? Get some pike on the field. Double cav. Very unusual composition. And a 2v2. It looks like strong side's going to make it work. Especially if they get in here. Monk, Monk definitely not going to be the play, given that we've, we're going to have a mil, million uh, light cab on the field. But I do think it'd be worth investing in some pikes. I mean, maybe, maybe Blue's thinking that Yellow's going to be teching into Archer at this point. 
again without a scout. No way to confirm whether that's true. Gandhi's eco looking here. Four stable, so he is gonna focus on production over eco. That will give strong side an advantage. And look at that. Mare player fast imping it, but into what? Not on stone. Doesn't have arbalist. Doesn't have bombard cannon. What is this? This is nuts. Oh no. Oh no. Isithor, no. Oh. <laughs> okay, actually, Hot Cross Buns bails there. Why did he bail? The game's over if he goes in there. Oh, because he didn't have plus two. Oh, but that was such an opportunity. Could have just run around, caused havoc until you have plus two. Oh. I am glad for Isithor, though. That was uh, just unfortunate timing for him. The second he deletes that house is when those, uh, the light cab were there. Yeah, gonna go for a monastery. Again, I can't. I don't think that's the right call here when you're up against this many light cab. Soon, soon to be Hussar. 25 farms for Khmer, so I guess Hot Crest Buns is just gonna stay. Scout Cavalry. A fast imp into Hussar? I've never seen it, but. Uh, First for everything, I suppose. Beautiful raids here for Gandhi. I didn't even notice him getting in. I was so focused on this Thor. These camels will be able to clean quick, but that is going to be some good damage. Nidu does have vills to spare. A lot more vills than any other player. And has the best unit to mitigate this gamut. Uh, mitigate the damage. Alright. What's the upgrade for Yellow? He's in Imperial Age. Has a Mangonel. Love the Mangonel. Gonna be able to deal with the Rams. I wanna see the Hussar upgrade. Give it to me, Hot Cross Buns. Ooh, green. Running under the Castle Fire has a chance to get pinched. Although these red camels actually, yeah, they're chasing those few units. Yeah, green just can't take any fight here. A hole is now open. Don't know why Yellow's not trying to run into some of these gaps. Second TC just now coming down here for blue. Ganji's knights being hunted. We have a monastery with relics here. Lithuanians. No relics. Third TC just now coming down for blue and for green. That is an ambitious town center. Sar is in the plus uh, four armor, almost in. A fast imp into Hussar. Oh my gosh, there's a hole. Oh. Get the trap. Very nicely done there by Blue. Finish it, finish the wall. Prepare. Nice mango shot there. Really nice defense by Isithor. Unfortunate hole in the wall, but managed to keep those out. At least for the moment. About 20 vills down at this point. Going heavy to stone, looking to get a castle, but rams all over the place. And where'd the mangonel go? I don't see the mangonel. This is wide open. Yellow Hussar could start running in here. Oh no, this is open. Blue's archer's about to be pinched. There's the Mangonel, but uh, Mangonel, not exactly the unit you want here. Wow. Strong side. <laughs> 42 vills right now, being raided over here. Ganji with some really nice raids. This damage here looks worse. Yellow at 55 bills, but that will be much, much less than 55 bills here in just a moment. Bills idled here. Bills about to be killed on this wood line. This TC is going down along with all the bills in it. 
knights are back here again, but really how much damage can you get done on Hindustanis with the camels all over the place? 104 bills for red. Louisville count already dropping down to Yellowville count levels. Hot cross buns with just the wildest all-in I have ever seen. Chi well played, indeed. That was uh, that was a unique valley game. All right. So hot cross buns and Midu take the set. So uh, yeah, they almost certainly will have secured themselves a playoff spot now uh, with wins through the first two weeks and in the Swiss system. It means they already have two points and um, yeah, should be basically a lock for the playoffs at this point. Tuscan Raiders won a week one, lost week two. Um, but I think they will be in an okay position. And uh, losses to stronger opponents um, are slightly better than losing to weaker opponents under the Swiss system. Uh, especially when you come to some of the later tiebreakers. So very well played there by Hot Cross Buns and Midu, and well played as well by Ganji and Isthathor. Very much in both those games. Both those games were competitive, especially game number one. And, uh, I mean, honestly, here, uh, Tuscan Raiders were in a position, I think, to win the game in early feudal. If those scouts are with the archers and they're able to get to yellow very early before we're thinking about anything like bloodlines, before there's a second stable, before there's armor. And uh, I mean, this is Khmer, so Khmer can jump in houses, but could have idled probably this whole economy more or less. And I think if they, as soon as they notice the double scouts, if they start hamming those spears a bit harder, um, right? Had they had three or four spears, they could have um, just kind of moved around the map freely with archers. But um, yeah. Double scouts, not just double scouts working for Strong Say here, but double scouts with a fast imp into Hussar. What was the Imperial Age time? I mean, 32 minutes, I guess, because he was in Feudal Age forever, right? 29 minute Castle Age time. So maybe it's not that fast of an imp, but um, uh, relative to the number of villagers that Hot Cross Buns was working with, it was. All right. Well, I enjoyed casting that one very much. Uh, yeah, best of luck to these two teams and their next set and, uh, in week three. And yeah, I'll be casting uh, some more Division C sets here shortly. Family's out of town for a few days, so I'm going to try to get a bunch of casting in here while I can. All right, y'all have a good night.